Hey everybody, welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Vlog, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm Eugene Driscoll, and joining me, as you can see, is Sheila O'Malley. Hello, Sheila. Hi, Eugene. Thanks for and having me. No problem. Thank you. And I'll try not to speak over you. Sorry. And Mr. John Marini. How are you, John? Hey, Eugene. So uh, Sheila is, and Sony is, Economic uh, Development Director and Grant Writer. John is the city's corporation council, and I don't have a specific agenda that uh, I have for this particular interview. Uh, I have a couple of general questions I'd like to ask, but it's really uh, an effort to try to uh, connect City Hall to the residents. Not that you guys haven't been doing a great job of that on the city's Facebook page and beyond, but uh, anyway, you know what I mean. So I, I guess the first thing I would ask about, and I don't know who wants to answer, perhaps you could raise your hand virtually. Uh, the, I, I, I haven't followed it. I don't know what it's about exactly. Uh, the Riverwalk, is it open? Is it closed? Or is part of it closed? Is it going to close tomorrow? Uh, what's going on with Ansonia's Riverwalk? So the mayor gave an order uh, yesterday, Sunday, to close the Ansonia portion of the Riverwalk. And that was after a lot of deliberation and even discussion with Derby. And ultimately the mayor wanted to err on the side of caution here. You know, he'd seen some traffic developing uh, at the Riverwalk, some social interaction, and essentially, you know, he's, he wants to err on the side of caution and safety. He's concerned that any social interaction could make this problem worse as, as we start to move into the next critical couple of weeks here and uh, made that call essentially to, to, stop, uh, to stop the entrance, uh, to block the entrance to the Riverwalk. Okay, so the entire length of the Ansonia side of the Riverwalk is closed. Yes. Is there markings? Because of course, one thing that is happening uh, as COVID-19 spreads and we're all told to stay home, to stay safe, people want to go walking, go walk into the woods. Not me, I never was into any of that, but uh, a lot of people are doing that at the same time. And uh, as we've seen in the state parks, they're being filled to capacity, although that's 50% of what it normally is. Uh, so what's gonna happen if someone goes to the river walk and uh, you know, isn't aware of what the city is doing and didn't watch this uh, video podcast, how are you gonna stop them from going on that property? I think there's physical uh, markings at the entrance. So Public Works was advised to put up some signage, and possibly a barricade. Uh, if someone is walking in that area and the police observe it, I'm sure they'll give them a friendly reminder. Um, and again, walking, of course, is encouraged. Uh, the city and the mayor simply don't want to see gatherings in areas where really uh, it's difficult for the city to observe what's happening, you know, and, and certainly on the length of the river walk, it's very difficult to fight, figure out what's happening on that walkway without walking up the river walk. Same thing with any of the parks. Um, so we, we just want to make sure we have a good idea of what's happening and to make sure no one's putting themselves in a dangerous position. And was, were you getting more people than usual on the river walk? I mean, one thing that uh, I'm experiencing, I'm essentially in my basement all day. Uh, and then on Facebook, uh, when I'm, I'm, I'm sequestered and sequestered. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I, I don't have an idea of what's happening on the river walk. Was, were there more people than usual? I was seeing reports on Facebook saying so, but did I, somebody actually go and check it out before the decision was made? That's the reports that, that we would get uh, in the last couple of weeks were some games of basketball happening on the course, excess traffic on the river walk. And again, when you're dealing with traffic in an isolated area, there's that concern that came up as to whether or not folks were following those precautions to stay six feet or more apart from each other. Um, and essentially, again, it's airing on the side of caution and just making sure that um, the public is not uh, assembling in a way that would violate those, uh, those safety precautions. And is there a time where the city, may, Sheila has her, her hand up. She actually does. I'm sorry, Sheila. I'm sitting here. I don't know where to look because if I look, look down here, it looks like I'm being rude. But go ahead, Sheila. I'm sorry. I wanted to add that, you know, the, the particular difficulty with the river walk is that it's not six feet wide. So in order to pass somebody, you are not going to be able to keep that six foot distance. And that's, I guess, you know, the main problem. Okay. Uh, then in terms of the other place uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, the grocery stores. You know, you have the uh, a stock shop uh, in uh, Ansonia and people need to be there uh, to get uh, food. Does the city go in and, sh I mean, actually all of this is really the jurisdiction of the Naugatuck Valley uh, Health District, uh, I assume. 
Uh, but they're obviously doing things that they uh, wouldn't normally do because there's a pandemic going on. But does the city have any involvement of checking that, making sure that there's not too many people going into a supermarket, that there's some type of social distancing happening there? Because that's another thing you read a lot on social media, that I went to the store and uh, too many people too close to me. So the, I believe the city would respond to complaints if they're given. We have certainly have responded to complaints about some businesses being open that say residents didn't feel were essential. Uh, I believe the operation of a gym in one case, a car wash in another. So the officers will go out to investigate the situation, make sure that it's not in violation of any protocols put out by the state. But in terms of that level of depth, we're essentially depending on the private businesses to follow the rules, to safeguard their patrons, and of course each other. Uh, and one thing to compliment uh, the city of Ansonia, some of the updates that the city has sent out through its emergency operations center have really been uh, above and beyond. I mean, these lists have everything from where you can get takeout to, uh, and I'm getting some feedback from one of you. I might have to mute you there. Is that Sheila? Who's, uh... oh, yeah, I was getting some feedback from something. But uh, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say that uh, the city's done a good job there. And uh, to that point, uh, tomorrow night there is a meeting uh, that's going to be on Zoom as well. Does someone want to tell me what uh, that is about? Yep, that, is, that meeting's basically going to be uh, fire, police, EMS, and we also will have public works, myself and John and the mayor. Um, talking about where we are from an emergency management perspective. Uh, Chief Coda will be on, uh, people from ARMS, and um, Mike D'Alessio. Is your uh, Department of Public Works? Correct. Okay. And is that going to be a, a, a Q&A? Uh, what types of, uh, are there specific questions that the public keeps asking uh, over and over again that will get answered tomorrow night? I think you're going to see presentations to start things off from each of the departments, but then we would like to uh, segue to a question and answer portion. Uh, you know, on Zoom, it's a little awkward sometimes dealing with that, but we're going to see how, how we could use it to that end. We certainly want more public participation. I mean, that's, it's part of, you know, that's the difficulty here is that, you know, local government is based around social interaction. Communication is key. And it, in a traditional setting, one-on-one -on -one communication is the gold standard, right? That's the best, the face-to-face. -face. And we're here in a crisis where that is prohibited. So to work around that is basically working around what was one of the hallmarks of local government. So we have to go above and beyond to, to fill that void. Thank you for helping. You know, the Valley Sentinel is a big part of that. Any news outlet is allowing the city representatives to connect with the residents. And we want to try that ourselves, um, testing out whether Zoom is a, good, um, is a good portal here. We want to see if we could use this as an option to go back and forth with the residents, hopefully directly through Zoom. Um, we'll try maybe a little bit of blending it with Facebook as time goes on to take messages that way. But yet, I would even say at this point, if there are questions you would like to see the city answer, you could start right now by responding to the, uh, the event posting that we have on our city Facebook for the virtual town hall tomorrow night. You could start by posing some questions right there um, uh, via Facebook, and we could take a look at those and maybe tailor our initial um, uh, presentations to get some of those questions answered. But yes, if there's questions that come up along the way, we can try to answer as many as we can by the end of that presentation. And there, hopefully, is what John's talking about, the virtual town hall uh, from the city of uh, Ansonian's Facebook page. Uh, so you said you really didn't know how to use Zoom, but you seem pretty adept. I don't know how to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's probably not working. But uh, switching gears for a second, uh, I wanted to ask about uh, positive cases in general. You know, that's uh, in terms of... You know, I'm an online newspaper, so I can see at any time what people are reading on the site. And uh, there, there is clearly uh, people want to know the numbers. And I know there is pushback from people who say, well, that's too negative, or what about recoveries or anything like that. But people clearly uh, want to know about the numbers. And I, the last I heard 
was uh, 35 people have tested positive as of April 4th uh, in Ansonia. Uh, 35 people, if, if I just messed that up. But do you get any information, either Sheila or John, about uh, generally speaking, the transmission in Ansonia, uh, where it might have uh, come into the city or anything like that? Are these healthcare workers or, or any, any type of other information you can give to the public other than just that number that we see? What's behind it? You know, in our emergency updates, we don't get much more detail beyond the number of cases. Um, that's information that, uh, you know, maybe our, our health professionals are keeping track of, but that's not something that we're privy to here on the local level. So we're essentially looking at the same stats that you are, um, cases. And for us, it's also important to know, you know, transportations to the hospital, hospitalizations, you know, that's the gauge that we're using right now to kind of determine whether or not this thing is causing an uptick in emergency situations in our area. And of course, our goal is just to see that be as flat as possible, um, if not on the decline. But no, we aren't, we aren't in a position that I think your health professionals and experts would be in, in terms of tracking how this thing is moving in real time. Okay. And then switching gears uh, to the economic impact. I mean, what we have happening is a medically induced economic lockdown. Uh, which is uh, on one hand, hopefully going to keep us, keep more people alive. Uh, on the other hand, it's very tough for small businesses to handle. Uh, and Ansonia has had this resurgence in the last 11 years that I've been associated with the city in some small way. Businesses on Main Street, uh, more activity and nightlife on Main Street. Undeniable uh, what's happened in the city of Ansonia. Uh, and now those businesses need help. So what are some of the ways the city is trying to act as a conduit uh, between the businesses that are being impacted and the help that might be available? All right, so I guess the first, uh, first way that we can be helpful and the best way is to get the information out there because there's a lot of programs both on the federal side of things, more so on the federal side, um, to help businesses, and in particular, the U.S. Small Business Administration has some very helpful programs uh, for our small businesses. You know, the, the ones that have started just recently or within the last year, it, ta it takes almost two full years to get up and running and situated and make a profit at a small business. So for those, um, you know, you're really going to see some struggling here. And we're hopeful that some of these programs uh, offered through the federal government are going to be helpful. Um, the Paycheck Protection Program, which you may have seen on our uh, Facebook page, we uh, were talking about the, the deadlines and the fact that they're looking at the applications right now. We do have some small businesses in town that um, have already applied for this. That's um, pay, Paycheck Protection Program. Um, is a loan um, through some of the various banks that are participating. I know People's Bank, for instance, is one of the lenders, but um, that allows you to keep people on the payroll for a certain number, period of time. Um, and then you, you may not have to pay back that loan if you keep those people um, for an extended period of time. And it can be used for payroll, for operations, so it's a good pool of money and um, it's a good program right now that um, the federal government is offering. So hopefully we'll see more people taking part in that. But, you know, again, I want them to know that they, they can always feel free to call me or John or the mayor. Our, um, our information is out there. Um, we're happy to assist, um, answer questions or assist with applications. Yeah, that's, that was going to be my next question. How do people uh, find out about this? And it just seems there is so much information out there. It's almost like there's an information uh, overload, overload to some extent. But again, the city sent out, uh, and Sonia sent out a, a list of resources, which was, I think, had everything on there. I hadn't, I hadn't seen, there, seen a list like that uh, anywhere else. Uh, so Facebook or, or Sheila, what's your phone number or email or whatever, whatever you wanted to give out where people can contact you? Both. It's um, 
S-O-M-A-L-L-E-Y at ansoniact.org. And my cell is 203-437-1598. Much better with text than email. Okay. <laughs> How about uh, in terms of impact that you've seen so far? Uh, I know just in Derby, Archie Moore's closed its doors, at least temporarily, unofficially. Mm -hmm. But that was something that was sort of in the works before COVID shut everything down. Uh, what businesses in Ansonia so far, uh, or a number, have closed temporarily? What's the impact uh, so far in Ansonia? I mean, we're not hearing a lot. I know Relish closed temporarily, I hope, but that's one of the businesses, the restaurants that have just recently opened. So we're hoping that's just temporary. Um, I hope it is. Uh, they've been very helpful donating a lot of food to our uh, EMS and um, public safety folks. So we're very grateful to them for that. Um, I, I don't think we're seeing all of it right now, Eugene. You know, we're just beginning to see some effects. I'm getting some calls from businesses inquiring about the programs. Um, we have, uh, for instance, Farrell Corporation uh, is an essential business and they're, they are 100% fully um, operating, operational. Um, they're all working from home, but they're uh, designated essential. So they're working, uh, continuing to work. Some of our manufacturers are continuing to work on a, on a um, skeleton crew type schedule. So um, it's a little bit early to tell, but you, you know, you can kind of predict that some that are fledgling are going to, are going to be struggling a little bit and we want to make sure we don't drop those. Mm. And then in terms of, uh, well, let me, before I ask the next question, let me just throw it back to either of you because I'm all over the place with these questions and Zoom just sent me a message saying, oh, we give you a gift of more than 40 minutes. So thank you, Zoom. I thought I had paid by 14 bucks, but apparently I have too many accounts. Uh, I didn't realize there was a limit on this. So uh, anything else that you do that you, you want to add uh, before I ask about like development in general uh, that I haven't asked so far? John, anything? Well, I would say with the, uh, on the business side of things, beyond the resources that we've already put out there for the businesses, we're likely going to have follow-up virtual town hall focusing just on local business issues. And if I, in fact, inviting the local business community to participate as we'd like to connect as much as possible with the local uh, shops, see what's going on. And again, try to connect them with the, uh, the resources that are out there on the state or federal level, even the local level here in Ansonia to figure out how we could get through it together. As you pointed out, there's been a big resurgence of economic activity and we see ourselves on the same team as our Ansonia businesses, you know, we want to weather this together. Um, and if it's going to be a much more of a, of a time out here, if we're in this for the long haul, we want to make sure they know where to turn for help so that we come out good on the other side together. And Sheila, is there anything else you wanted to add about uh, business help or what you're doing to, to help? Uh, just to say that, you know, please reach out to me if you have any questions. I always like to say that if it's out there and I don't know about it, we're all in trouble. So I, I, sh I should be on top of these things and hopefully we are um, to help be a resource. Okay. And then just moving on, maybe this is the last uh, uh, topic I'll broach, but in terms of, I mean, Ansonia had or has some major projects that were in the works, the, the police station is something that uh, the workers were working on. Uh, the buildings across the street from my office, which no one's gonna know where that is, the ATP, Palmer, whatever you call them, uh, uh, buildings that the city has been sort of saddled with uh, to some extent for a very long time. What is the status of those types of projects given the fact that the economy has crawled to a stop? Um, I don't know if John wants to chime in or we can, we can trade off. But um, in terms of the PD facility, 
Banton Construction continues to operate daily. They haven't, haven't seen a reduction in crew. Um, they're working in various different parts of the building. So that project is still on target, has about eight months left. Um, the cycle is eight months or the contract. So we're, um, you know, that's, that's actually a very positive thing. We just had a, a meeting with uh, Banton and everything is on schedule. Um, I don't know if that's going to change down the road, but right now it looks good. Um, ATP and Palmer, John can uh, fill you in a little bit more, but we just spoke with uh, our attorney and their attorney, Shaw's attorney, and we're trying to set up a closing date, um, hopefully this week. So they're eager to get started, and they have folks that are on the payroll that want to start with the construction project. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually surprising to hear. Yeah. Go ahead, John. I interrupted. I was going to say things look very positive on that front. We just got a certificate of title and essentially we're trying to pencil in a closing date. You know, documents are finalized. We've had approvals from the board of aldermen for some time and also the zoning board. So with any luck here by the end of April, we may actually have a transfer to Shaw. And of course that would be on the timetable that the board of aldermen has set forth. So there would be a milestone agreement here. Uh, to make sure not only do we have a, you know, a transfer of property, but we have a project in the works uh, that's going to be completed by uh, a date certain. Okay, and yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything uh, continues to move forward and we go down the, uh, the back end of this COVID curve that we keep hearing about and emerge on the other side of it. Uh, okay, so little, go ahead. Um, don't mean to talk over you, but... A little bit of positive news, Riverwalk positive news, is that we our design was approved uh, to, as of today, and we're going to go out to bid for the construction of segment, segments three and four, and hopefully people will be able to use them once they're constructed. So that's and, positive. And segments three or four, where is that in terms of, uh, where is that going? What connection is that? What piece of the Lego puzzle is that? you to help me with that but that's uh that's along the target site along the you know the dike of the uh, river gotcha okay uh and just i'm sorry go ahead sheila sorry eugene okay uh, yeah zoom is awkward see I, and i'm awkward in general but uh a little more, eugene a little more good information too um and this is probably the first place where we're announcing it but uh, NVCOG, Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments, just last week approved our application for funding for demolition as it relates to the SHW building. What is the SHW building? That's the portion of what you'd probably know as copper and brass with a guardhouse that faces out towards Eagle Hose and the armory. Oh, okay. Five North Main Street. Um, and it's owned by Pandel Properties. Give it's got a big SHW label on it, and it is owns its separate owners from the larger par uh, portions of the property. Wanna, but it's wanna... directly on North Main, and, and uh, you know, hey, we, again, we, have... we want to um, thank Rick Dunn and uh, uh, Chairman Neil O'Leary and the board members for approving that funding for us. And I, I... I'm here. We just had, oh, good, all good. right, Mayor Cassetti, how are you? It's you, G. I'm sorry, good. I was with a bunch of residents up on Crestwood and, and uh, Beachwood Drive. They had an issue today, and I took care of it for them. I was with them for a while. Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. I'm glad to have you. Uh, I mean, we, we were just talking about a whole bunch of things, but uh, let me just ask you, Mayor, in terms of uh, how you think the city is doing in, in terms of uh, social distancing, uh, and all that good stuff. I know you, you, you closed the river walk. Did you want to talk about that or anything else that you, or yeah, any, I, you know, the social distancing they're doing, but on the river walk, I, I go by there every day and I see the people congregating and close together. And, and I said, they're not doing it. So I just ordered uh, Sunday night. I told Mike Alessio and chief Coda that I'm closing down the river walk on both ends from the gazebo to Pershing drive. And do you have any idea how long that'll be in effect? I, I would anticipate it's probably going to be a few weeks. We're, we're going to start going through. I was listening to Dr. Felci and uh, Bill Gates uh, today, 
And this next couple of weeks is going to be pretty rough for us. And I want to get past that and so that the curve is we're, we're lower the curve. And then hopefully in a week or two after that, we can open it up. And Mr. Mayor, in terms of uh, any messages you want to get out to the people who are watching this and live in the city of Ansonia, I mean, obviously it's been a, a rough couple of weeks on parents, on families, on, on people that Everybody. are still working. Yeah, what do you want to tell them? Everybody. No, I, I do listen. Listen to the experts. If they tell you to stay home, stay home, stay safe, please. I sent out a couple robocalls stating that. And I got to tell you, most of the people, I would say 75% of the people are abiding by it. Stay home and stay safe. We'll get through this. We will get through this. I, I'm confident of that. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the mingling together and stuff like that, that they were doing on the river walk, you know, you got to have that social distancing and you got to wear a face mask. I got anybody that needs face masks. I got them. I got hundreds of them. So if anybody needs any, call my office and I'll be more than happy to give you the, uh, and, uh, Mayor, what about in terms of the businesses there? You're right across from your office, there's all types of new businesses that opened up in Ansonia over the yeah. last couple of years. Uh, are you talking to them? What's the sense of the business? I, 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 meet with, I, I go by there every week and talk to all of them. And I told them that there's loans available if they need loans. I have the SBA uh, phone number. I give it to all of them. And I told them, you know, if you need to get any financial help, they're given these for, uh, forgivable loans. I says apply for it. I had three of them today come in from Palma, from the uh, Dairy Mart, and from uh, Relish came in looking for that. So I gave them the information. Oh, that's good to hear. All right. Well, yeah, I yeah, want to thank they, whatever they need. I want to thank you uh, for calling in, uh, Mayor. Uh, uh, you know, I know you're you're working hard, and I want to thank Sheila and John for both agreeing to do this with uh, no notice. Yeah and uh, putting up with my inability to really use Zoom. So I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, no problem. No problem. Thank you for having us. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you. Right. Stay, stay, stay. Bye-bye.